Thank you, Susan, for your hard work, and thank you for your leadership over the last years. As president of the party, you've helped to build a political organization that has a ground game like no other, and you were able to lead us to win not only one election, but two elections. So thank you. A warm, a warm round of applause for Suzanne. Alors, chers amis, chers militants, bonsoir et bienvenue au Congrès du Parti libéral du Canada. I would like also to welcome all our international delegates coming from around the world that are here now in Ottawa with us. Thank you so much. And welcome to your Liberal Convention. You know, I've been on the road a lot lately, and I couldn't be happier to be here at home. Ça fait du bien d'être en famille. Over the past 18 months, I've had the privilege to travel across the world and represent Canadians, from Peru to Ukraine, from South Korea to Kenya. And while the entire world is filled with people who want to do good, who always want to do better, I'm convinced, now more than ever, that Canada is the best place to call home. When I tell people abroad that I'm Canada's foreign minister, their faces light up. Because no other, because no matter where you are in the world, Canada has a special place in people's imagination. And everyone I meet has a story to tell about Canada. And what I hear are stories of hope, stories of hard work, stories of people coming together. Le Canada, c'est un concentré de ce que le monde offre de mieux. Un pays qu'on a bâti ensemble à notre image, en français, en anglais, et dans les langues autochtones. We are strong, not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And we stand up for what we believe in. And we're honest with ourselves when we're not doing enough. On n'est pas parfait, mais on investit chaque jour pour devenir meilleur. We believe in progress that benefits everyone no matter where you live, where you work, or who you love. And that is what it means to be Canadian. In my current job, I spend a lot of time with Prime Minister Trudeau around the world at international summits. Whether we are at the United Nations, at the G7, at the G20, or La Francophonie, the same thing always happens. Progressive leaders from around the world come to see Prime Minister Trudeau with one question in mind. How did you do it? How did you put a price on pollution and manage to win two back-to-back -back elections? How did you lift how did you lift 300,000 children out of poverty? How did you create a million jobs after the pandemic? And my personal favorite, how did you get $10 a day childcare done across the country, not within years, but within months? And I can hear Karina Gold screaming right now. And do you know what the answer is? It's some things that we've all heard him say in the past and that we still continue to hear him say. It's something that we all believe in. Hope and hard work. De l'espoir et du travail acharné. And that's the promise of Justin Trudeau. In every single campaign he ran on, in, in every single campaign he ran on, and that's why he's our leader, and that is why he's our prime minister. <laughs> C 
C'est ce qui fait de Justin Trudeau le doyen des leaders progressistes à travers le monde. Et c'est ce qui fait de lui une force pour le changement. When we look at what's happening around the world, we see authoritarians and far-right movements growing. We see disinformation spreading. We see the rising backlash to the most basic rights of women, girls, and LGBTQ people. And we see war criminals invading their neighbors, committing unspeakable atrocities at every turn. But in these turbulent times, Canada remains a beacon of hope. And we can't take that for granted. Our geography may have protected us from conflict and instability in the past, but the rising tide of the far right has already reached our shores. Just to think about Pierre Poiliev, got elected leader of the Conservative Party. He stood shoulder to shoulder with and gave a platform to conspiracy theorists. He said to hell with fighting climate change and fought to protect the biggest polluters instead of our planet. And he puts the interests of gun lobbies above the safety of our families. And once Mr. Poliev became leader, all we got was more of the same. He undermines the public institutions at the very heart of our democracy. And instead of standing up to conservative caucus members who attack a woman's right to choose, he gives them promotions. Pierre Poliev can yell the word freedom all he wants. Canadians know, and we all know, that he means freedom for some, but not for all. Pierre Poliev a démontré qu'il va tout faire pour satisfaire les éléments les, les, éléments les plus radicaux de sa base. Aucune attaque n'est trop vicieuse, ni même trop ridicule. Et ceux qui croyaient qu'il se calmerait une fois qu'il aurait gagné la course au leadership, le constatent maintenant. Il ne changera pas. C'est l'exception qui confirme la règle. Pierre Poliev, on ne gagne jamais à le connaître. Et pour mes amis du Québec, vous le savez, ce n'est pas le Bloc québécois qui est capable de défendre nos intérêts contre la droite radicale et de nous faire progresser au pays. On se rappelle encore, lorsque Stephen Harper a coupé les vives à Radio-Canada, il y avait 49 députés du Bloc québécois à la Chambre des communes. Que ces mêmes députés bloquistes ont été incapables d'empêcher les conservateurs de mettre la hache dans notre culture. Les seuls qui ont livré pour le Québec, ce sont nous, les libéraux de Justin Trudeau. Yves-François Blanchette n'était même pas à la table de négociation quand on est arrivé à une entente avec les provinces qui mettraient des milliards de dollars dans la santé au Québec. Ce n'est pas Yves-François Blanchette qui annonçait aux travailleurs et aux travailleuses de la Dévi qu'ils avaient des bonnes jobs et ça pour les 30 prochaines années. C'est Justin Trudeau. Et c'est sûrement pas grâce à Yves-François Blanchette qu'on va investir des sommes records dans la protection du français au Québec et à travers le pays parce qu'il va voter contre le budget. Comme le dit ma grande amie Diane Lepitier, ce qu'on a besoin au Québec, c'est des faiseux, pas des chialeux. Eight years ago, we were presented with a choice. More Harper cuts and conservative cynicism or compassion and a commitment to growing the middle class. Canadians chose the latter. And since then, all of us in this room, MPs, staff members, liberal volunteers and supporters, have worked darn hard each and every day to make sure that this country is a better place to live. And today, today, the choice that confronts Canadians is even more stark and the stakes have never been higher. In moments like this one, who is leading matters. 
and who they fight for matters. Avec Justin Trudeau, nous avons un chef qui se bat pour protéger notre planète, pour qu'on la puisse la transmettre en santé aux générations futures, qui se bat pour le droit à l'avortement, qui se bat pour la classe moyenne, qui se bat pour que les Autochtones aient les mêmes opportunités que tous les autres Canadiens. We've got a leader who fights for healthcare workers, for our teachers, for our farmers, who fights for people just like you, who roll up their sleeves every day to make sure that this country is a better place. So, sans plus attendre, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter le 23e Premier ministre du Canada, Justin Trudeau!